Erafel covering mine, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. The situation in Ukraine, Crimea, and Russia is not looking very good. Uh, right now, we are seeing here, uh, this is courtesy of Already Happened on their uh, Twitter page there, sharing more Russian aircraft has entered into uh, Crimea. This, uh, according to this video right here, uh, Russian SU-27 and SU-30s, 20 more have arrived on the tiny island nation there, uh, preparing for a possible defense against uh, Ukraine's attack on eastern Donetsk uh, and the Luhansk region, as well as possible NATO intervention in this region here. Uh, we shared with you in a video not too long ago how that Russia had already sent in 100 aircraft to the tiny uh, island of Crimea, uh, that has voted to go back into the uh, Russian Federation. And not only that, though, we've got another article that's very uh, concerning as you begin to look at things that are going on. And of course, as we examine the entire region uh, and the things that are happening, not only in uh, the, the Ukraine, the Sea of Azov, uh, the Black Sea, Crimea, uh, but we also are going to be looking at the situation that is happening over inside of Syria and Trump's uh, uh, removal of troops coming out of Syria and what that might really mean. Uh, but as we continue on here, uh, this was on TASS, a uh, Russian news agency. Here is in the Russian language. Article here about over 3,000 servicemen practice liquidating aftermath of a nuclear attack in Russia's south. What's going on? Russia preparing for a possible all-out nuclear or even a biological war on its own soil. Something spilling over into Russia. That lets you know that Russia considers the stakes inside of uh, the area there a, a very high and credible threat to the national security of the Russian Federation. So what could go down with Ukraine with the Donbass region, which is where the separatists, the self-proclaimed uh, Luhansk and Donetsk republics are located at on the eastern part of Ukraine. If this spirals out of control, Russia is ready to defend not only possibly those on the breakaway uh, republics, but as well as the Crimean uh, Peninsula as well. So we're going to have to wait and see how this uh, plays out. But Russia definitely getting ready for a worst case scenario, and that's a nuclear war. Uh, speaking of nuclear wars, we move on, though. I want to share some more information with you. The U.S. Navy continuing flying planes into the Odessa area. A C-40A Clipper was descending uh, earlier today, landing there in Odessa. So U.S. military still having a presence inside of Ukraine. I think this is one reason why Russia is taking the whole uh, situation with Ukraine far more serious. And on top of that, we have the, uh, the, U the U.K., United Kingdom's Navy is ported right at Ukraine as well, showing solidarity with Ukraine. Even though Ukraine is not considered a NATO ally, they're still showing their resolve to fight and protect Ukraine in the event that this spirals out of control uh, in the region with Russia. So uh, very, very problematic situation in there. And of course, we have this article here coming out on uh, tvzizda.ru in the LPR, which is uh, the uh, Luhansk region, said that the Donbass arrived trains with tanks APU delivered T-64 anti-tank guns MT-12 and BMP uh, are designed for the Ukrainian armed forces. They're claiming these have arrived into there. Uh, says troops with tanks on other and uh, and other weapons arrived on the railway station and Ruba's uh, Zonoi in the Donbas delivered the T-64 anti-tank guns MT-12 and BMP-1 are designed for the Ukrainian armed forces. This was stated in the press service of the People's Militia of the self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic. Its chief, Jacob Os uh, Osarasi, noted that information on the arrival of weapons for the armed forces of Ukraine was also confirmed by the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission. Now, that kind of goes in, uh, as a slap in the face to the Ukrainians who are posting on social media that all these uh, movement of troops and tanks and things like that that are coming towards the contact line are all fabricated because 
Well, some of the journalists are probably using old photos and they're saying these photos appeared back such and such years ago, things of that nature there. Uh, I can believe that. Uh, I can believe that old photos are used. Many journalists have to use file photos when they're first breaking a story. Doesn't mean that the evidence is not so. And so if the OSCE that is monitoring the area has confirmed that yes, that equipment is arriving there, then it doesn't really matter a difference. Just like in this photo here, maybe this is a file photo. The point is, the situation is very serious and it's in a very dire uh, situation there. Let's move on over to the Middle East right now. Turkey threatens to bury Kurdish forces in Syria amid U.S. withdrawal. Ah, you know, this is the thing that I just hated to see. I knew that this would be one thing that is going to escalate without question. And it seems to me that Turkey's uh, aim in this region is to take over the region. Uh, President Trump selling the Patriot missile battery system to Turkey as they move in. But another thing that I believe that, that is going on that a lot of people maybe are, have not really taken into consideration is that the United States military pullout uh, may have been more so for an, an assault and a, and a launch of an attack on Iran itself paving the way, moving out troops to get them out of the direct line of fire. And uh, that's something that a lot of people don't think are, are taken into consideration. And yet at the same time, many are, are celebrating and, and are, seem to be jubilant that, uh, as I've been seeing in Russian media, that Russia has won. The U.S. is leaving. That may not be such a sign of uh, victory, but rather a sign of something more dire coming. As uh, uh, AMN News reports here, Israel to intensify attacks in Syria after U.S. troop withdrawal, according to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Says, uh, speaking of the 5th, Israeli Greece Cyprus summit held in the southern city of Beersheba, or Beersheba, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged to intensify efforts in Syria. We will continue to act in Syria to prevent Iran's efforts uh, to military entrench itself against us. We are, re uh, we, uh, are not reducing our efforts. We will increase our efforts. I know that we do so with the full support and backing of the U.S., Netanyahu said. So don't think that just because President Trump's moving out this, uh, this forces that have been over there with the Kurds that this is an open green light that, uh, well, Russia and President Assad have won because the U.S. is leaving. A bigger enemy is moving in. And believe me, Turkey and President Assad do not get along. Erdogan and Assad do not get along whatsoever. And Russia allowing this to happen and allowing them to come in and then just slaughter the Kurds is a shame on the Russian president for that to be happening. Uh, but then again, it was also a shame on the U.S. President Donald Trump for, allow, for leaving the Kurds stranded uh, to be murdered by the Turkish uh, jihadists as well as his own troops who will enter in and do exactly that in order to take over, take over certain parts of the land there to annex it for his own goal and own purposes in the future there. Uh, Putin says U.S. presence in Japan complicates a signing of a peace treaty. Wow, that's a new one there coming out there. Uh, now he's saying here that uh, President Vladimir Putin said on Thursday that the United States military presence in Japan was complicating the search for a formal peace treaty between Moscow and Tokyo. Russia and Japan have been in a dispute for several decades over the island territories captured by the Soviet troops in the last days of the World War II. A result, they have still not formally uh, ended hostilities. So now Putin is saying that the U.S. being in Japan is where the complication really comes from. I think just because the United States left uh, Syria doesn't really mean that we're going to be leaving Japan, but you just never know. There's some really strange things that have been happening uh, here lately, so I can't say for sure which direction this is actually going to go into. We'll just have to kind of wait and see how that plays out there. Uh, so at any rate there, uh, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for, for tuning in. And uh, trust has been a blessing to you. Consider supporting the broadcast. Uh, I know a lot of people are busy with the holidays right now, but we appreciate your support and your help. You can visit our website, uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there or right at the bottom of your screen on the behind you there. 
you can actually go to our website there and uh, help help there as well. I'll be going into a very interesting message uh, this weekend on the Noon Institute. Got a, a biblical teaching there and uh, fixing to record now for Patreon. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, over on Patreon, we're going to be talking about the, uh, well, kind of like the Mark of the Beast, going to get into a little different issue, coming, bringing about the New World Order, and you can't buy or sell. Saving you take that mark. I think there's some interesting things going on in the world today that you guys might find a bit interesting. Thank you.